Next page, a little bit of data, a little bit of graph drawing. The measured values of V and D are given in the table. Complete the missing value for V over D in the table, including absolute uncertainties. D divided by V, 13.0 divided by 10. That's gonna be 1.30. So 1.30 is the value, plus or minus. Now, what we have to do here is convert this into a percentage uncertainty, so that this one's easy. This one's just 10% uh, uncertainty, one in 10. Do the same for this one. A little bit of calculation required here, so it's gonna be 0.5 divided by 13.0 times by 100. That gives me uncertainty of 3.85-ish. I'll just leave it as, I suppose I'll put 85 on there as well. 3.85% uncertainty there. So that means when I do distance divided by velocity, this percentage of uncertainty divided by this percentage of uncertainty, I have to add those percentage of uncertainties to get a total of uh, 10 plus 3.85 of 13.85% uncertainty in uh, my D over V value. So I need to now convert that into an absolute uncertainty. So I need to know what 13.85% of 1.3 is, so 1.3 times by 0.1385 will give me 0.18 and some change. 0.18 is gonna be my uncertainty that I'm gonna write down. 0.18 is my plus or minus uncertainty there. Now we have the general game of plotting these points on a graph. Uh, it looks like this one's been done, this one's been done, this one's been done, and this one's been done, but these two haven't. Uh, the graph paper's pretty shoddy to use, so I need to, if I do the 10 one first, graph graffiti my way, a line up from number 10, and I need to cut it off at 1.3, so that's 1.1, 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. So that's where my point is going to have to be plotted. And I need to do a plus or minus 0.18. I'll have to round that to 0.2, which is going to be four squares either side. So one, two, four, error bar, and one, two, three, four, error bar there as well. Now I need to do the same for the velocity 15. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Here's my 15 line going all the way up now. I'm only doing this because the graph is so terrible. And I need to level that off at 1.63. So that'll round up to 1.65. 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, 1.6, 1 1.7, 1.65 would be there. So that's where I'm gonna draw my cross. And then I need to do a plus or minus 0.14. That's going to have to round up to 0.15, which is going to be plus or minus three little squares on the graph. So one, two, three, and below one, two, three. Uh, hopefully that will score me all the marks there, plotting the graph. Now I'm going to have to keep flicking back to this page for the next part of the question. Determine values of A and T, including their absolute uncertainties. Let's get a ruler out and get this doing done. Well, let's get our best values done first. So I'll work in green for the best that I can get. So I'm gonna need a y-intercept and a gradient. So just using the, where the crosses are for the recorded data. So I'm ignoring the error bars at this stage and I'm just trying to go through as, you know, just draw the line of best fit based on the data that I've got. I'll go with that. Nice big line of best fit there. So let's work out what this uh, y-intercept is. So that's 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7 is my y-intercept, and the y-intercept is the same as the reaction time. So my best value for the reaction time, t, is 0 0.7. I better put best next to that. Next deal is to work out the gradient of the line. Always draw the biggest possible triangle you can. dx. That's gonna be 43. My dy, 2.75 is gonna be my best dy. And so therefore my best gradient is going to be dy by dx, 2.75 divided by 43. And that best value has to be two sig figs, 0.064 is gonna be my best value for the gradient. 
the gradient is equal to m equals 1 over 2a so my best value for a is going to be 1 over 2m that's going to be 1 divided by 2 times 0 0.064 7.8 is my best value for a meters seconds to the minus 2 now I have to do the whole thing again, but this time I have to choose like the worst possible line to fit this graph. You can either do the steepest line you can get away with, or the shallowest line you can get away with. Uh, doesn't, don't, doesn't really matter which one. I'll go for the shallowest line I can get away with, which means I'm gonna try and get my, my line. It has to run th between all the error bars, but now what I'm doing is I'm literally ignoring the data points themselves. And I'm just gonna go from the lowest error bar here to the highest error bar over here and line up my ruler with those two points. Check that my ruler the line that I'm about to draw will go through between all the error bars, and it will. So now I'll just do this again, but in red pen so that we can tell the difference between the good and the bad. So now I've got a, a y-intercept worst of t equals, and that's going to be 0 0.95. Best record this to as 0 0.70 then as a result of that being 0 0.95. And now I need to do uh, all of this all over again. But the way I'm going to do it is my dx is going to be the same for both. So 43 and my dy, the worst, 2.35. And then I can do the same calculations I've done up here. But for my worst line, worst gradient dy by dx, 2.35 divided by 43. To two sig figs, that's going to be 0. 055 worst worst day 1 over 2 times 0 0.055 to 2 sig figs 9.1 meters seconds to the minus 2 so i've got everything all the numbers that i've determined here my best value for the acceleration my worst value for the acceleration my best value for the y intercept my worst value for the y intercept all the calculations I've used are all, all on the page for anyone to see and analyze where it came from. So use figure 2.2 to determine values for A and T. So let's do T first. So my, my y-intercept equals T and my best y-intercept T equals 0 0.70 seconds. And then I'll just put brackets C graph. They're obliged to then check that out. My worst value for T was 0.95 seconds, C graph, and therefore my absolute uncertainty, 0.95 minus 0.70, which will be plus or minus 0.25 seconds. So down here, my best value for T is 0.70 plus or minus 0.25. 5. Same again for the gradient. The gradient equals 1 over 2a. My best value for the gradient is 0 0.064 c graph and my worst 0 0.055 c graph. Therefore my best value for a was 7.8 and my worst value for A was uh, 9.1 and therefore these two values will have an absolute uncertainty of uh, 9.1 minus 7.8 1.3 is my uncertainty so my best value down here for my answer will be 7.8 plus or minus 1.3 Three. It was suspected that the method used to determine distance d included a zero error. The distance recorded by the student was larger than it should have been. Discuss how this would affect the actual value of t obtained in c from your graph. If these values are bigger than they should be, then these values are bigger than they should be, which means all the points that you've plotted on the graph along the y-axis are higher up than they should be, which means your y-intercept is higher up than it should be, which means your value of t, the thinking 
time is higher than it should be. Let's do it step by step. All recorded values of D are larger than they should be. The calculated values D over V will also be larger than they should be. All points on the graph are plotted higher on the y-axis than they should be, making the y-intercept higher than it should be. This means the determined value for t is higher than it should be. And then just to make it clear at the end, nice little punchline, the actual value of t will be less than 0.70 seconds. First two questions done.